Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to join the Patreon if you want to vote in polls or grab some character sheets and like and subscribe for more personal space next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Shrek, and I want to remind everyone that Shrek was a great character and a great movie before he was a meme. Too many times I've heard DMs lamenting their players are turning their campaign into a Shrek movie. I've even been that DM. But Shrek is a roleplay heavy campaign that subverts traditional fantasy tropes and has a party who are all having a great time. It might seem simple, but there are definitely some layers there. Some. Hi, I'm Captain America. Here to talk to you about one of the most valuable traits a soldier or student can have. Patience. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to be thick and green like a shamrock shake to deal with the mobs and their pitchforks. Next, we'll get stinky, giving you the ability to incorporate blasts of gas from your face with combat burps. Finally, we need to be wrestling ready with the ability to bounce off the ropes in a fairy tale freakdown. For stats, we're going to be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just watch your strength and wisdom. Constitution will be number one, actually. It ain't easy being green, but it's slightly easier when you can take some hits. Strength next, you can wrestle dragons. That's pretty strong. Wisdom after that, you take care of yourself and live off the land, not to mention making a mean weed rat stew. Dexterity is higher than you might think. Shrek is pretty nimble for a guy his size. Intelligence is a bit low. Per the musical, you've been on your own since you were seven, and political developments in your world seem to surprise you. We'll dump charisma, though. Even though you're a decent singer and a big scary ogre, nobody likes you, and you don't really know how to express yourself. There isn't an ogre race in D&D. There isn't. No matter what I do, do, I will have to reflavor it. I want to make sure that's abundantly clear. Way too often, I have to do this and still get people who are like, there isn't a treant race in D&D, you can't make Groot. So Shrek is a gnome. I'm kidding. We're going to make him an Eberron orc rather than a half orc because he is a full ogre. And we're saying orcs are ogres because in the Shrek universe, an ogre is only like seven feet tall and green, which is what an orc is in D&D. &D. Not to mention all of these other orcish ogreish abilities. You get plus two strength and plus one constitution. We've cut out the intelligence dip from the Volo orc, but you still get 60 feet of dark vision and a powerful build to double your carrying capacity. You're aggressive, letting you move up to your movement speed in the direction of an enemy as a bonus action, which is good for your more melee sensibilities. Shrek never pulls out an Uzi in any of the movies. Eberron orcs can choose two skills from a short list rather than just intimidation, though we are going to grab intimidation, and survival for your culinary sensibilities. We'll have to build our own background for acrobatics and performance. You're not going to be able to get those from your starting class, but that's fine. You're allowed to do that in the player's handbook. Our starting class is going to be a fighter, even though we're not staying here long. You get two skills from the fighter list. Athletics and animal handling would be my picks. Donkey is a fully sentient being, but just because he has knowledge of his own death doesn't mean he doesn't like you. For your fighting style, we're going to use the unarmed fighting from the class feature variants Unearthed Arcana, which means those of you playing at home can take a shot. A shot of water, specifically. Hydration is important. This lets you deal 1d6 damage with your unarmed attacks, or 1d8 when you have two free hands. You deal 1d4 to the creatures you grapple, and deal an extra d4 of damage to creatures you attack while they are grappled. It's pretty much a wrestling fighting style, which works for your style of fighting. You also get Second Wind, letting you recover 1d10 plus your fighter level in HP as a bonus action once per short rest, which never hurts because it's healing. That's literally the opposite of hurting. Multi-classing at level 2 is another shot of water, so let's jump over to Barbarian to get some Ogre Anger. Rage lets you give yourself advantage on strength checks and saves, extra damage on strength-based attacks, and resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. You might not even notice if there's an arrow in your butt. Of course, that arrow may find it difficult to find purchase in your posterior, as you have un armor defense, making your AC 10 plus your dexterity and constitution modifier while you're not wearing armor. It's fairly similar to the monk version, but you can also wear a shield with it if you want, so it's a little bit better. Shrek doesn't use a shield, but I just think it's worth mentioning. Second level barbarians get reckless attacks, letting you make your attacks with advantage as long as you don't mind giving your enemies advantage to hit you. It's meant to pretty much directly pair with the defensive boosts from raging. Danger Sense gives you advantage on dexterity saving throws against things you can see, like your best friend's future's wife's fire breath. 
Chromatic Dragon? More like Chromantic Dragon, am I right? Third level Barbarians can choose a Primal Path. Berserker will get us something for Do the Roar later, but for now you get Frenzy, letting you make attacks as a bonus action while you're raging, but you'll suffer a level of exhaustion once the rage ends. That'll go away with a long rest though, so just don't think about how your wife marrying you might stop her from living the life she's always wanted. That could keep you up at night. Fourth level barbarians get an ability score improvement. Get that constitution up. Above all else, you're tenacious. It actually won't relate to your belches, but I feel like it should. We'll get them in the second, don't worry. Fifth level barbarians get an extra attack, letting you attack twice instead of once as an action for a bit more brawler energy. You also get fast movement, making you 10 feet faster on the rounds. You're not wearing heavy armor. Your vest is leather at most. And almost all of your quests involve a road trip at some point or another. Good movement speed gets that done in a tight 100 minute runtime. Now, we still need to smell like someone who bathes in mud and brushes their teeth with bugs. That's right, it's druid time. First level druids learn some spells. Poison spray forces a constitution saving throw on a creature, dealing 2d12 poison damage to those that fail. Better out than in, I always say. Resistance gives a creature a d4 to add to saving throws. You're pretty versatile in terms of keeping yourself and your friends alive. Free first level spells, a jump will triple your jump distance for a minute, which can be useful when the castle is collapsing. There's a dragon chasing you and you have to get the princess out. Jump checks might not show up all that often, but when they do, they're pretty important. Thunder wave could be a decent roar. It forces a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 15 foot cube in front of you, dealing 2d8 thunder damage to those that fail and pushing them back 10 feet, half damage and no pushing if they succeed. Thunder is basically sonic damage and you can roar loud enough to shake a house. That cannot be good for the eardrums. Second level druids can choose a circle and the circle of spores lets us ignore wild shaping which is good because Shrek does not turn into an animal. You get a halo of spores letting you deal 1d4 necrotic damage to a creature within 10 feet of you. The spores are not visible and silent but deadly. Just say it's brimstone if anyone calls you out on it. You can embrace a symbiotic entity which doubles the spore damage and lets you add a d6 of poison damage to your melee attacks to put some stank on that punch. This also gives you 4 temporary HP for every druid level you have and it lasts for 10 minutes using your wild shape uses. Also you can turn into a cat but just get stinky, that's what's in character. For this level spell, Long Strider increases the target's movement speed by 10 feet for a minute. Give it to your noble steed if you need to rescue your wife she might need a hero. And what's more heroic than being fearless? Sixth level Berserker Barbarians get Mindless Rage, making you immune to charming or frightening effects while you're raging. The only thing you're afraid of is losing the people you care about, and that's probably not what your enemies are using to scare you. Seventh level Barbarians get Feral Instinct, giving you advantage on initiative rolls, and you can't be surprised if the first thing you do in combat is enter a rage. You've been attacked by mobs so many times, you do their lines for them. Eighth level Barbarians get an ability score improvement cap off your constitution for an extra layer of ogre hide. Do you ever think that you've peeled a red onion enough, but there was one more layer of skin than you thought, so then your spaghetti just has like little pieces of onion paper in it? That's how thick I want you to be. Ninth level barbarians get brutal critical, meaning that when you land a critical hit, you can add an extra, extra damage die to really mess someone up. Occasionally, like 10% of the time with your reckless attacks, not bad. 10th level berserkers get intimidating presence, letting you force a wisdom saving throw of eight plus your proficiency bonus and charisma modifier on a creature. Failing that, they are frightened until the end of your next turn and you can extend Send it with an action on your next turn. Honestly, your charisma modifier is bad, but the proficiency bonus should help it not be terrible. This is the best we're gonna get for it, do the roar, unless you would rather use Thunder Wave. At least when you use Thunder Wave, the creature isn't immune to the spell for 24 hours like they are with this. I feel like since barbarians are so demanding that you invest in your physical stats, you should get to use your strength modifier for intimidation checks and this. Homebrew it if you want, but we make raw onions here. 11th level barbarians get relentless rage, meaning the first time you would hit 0 HP while you're raging, you can just make a DC 10 constitution save to go to 1 HP instead. It doesn't go away after this, instead the DC just goes up by 5 each time, making you an incredibly difficult ogre to bring down. I guess all ogres are incredibly difficult to bring down, but you especially. 12th level barbarians get another ability score improvement, more strength means bigger punches. I'm tempted to invest in the wisdom, but you don't really use it for the spore stuff, so I think Ogre Might is a better investment. 13th level Barbarians get another brutal critical die, so a critical punch from you now deals 4d8 damage. That's a big punch. No wonder you made such short work of Farquaad's men. Get it? Short work? It's okay to make fun of him, he's a bigot. 14th level Berserkers get Retaliation, letting you make a melee attack against a creature as a reaction after they hit you with an attack. It's nice of you to just tell the mobs to run away. You're a really rough guy to tangle with. 
15th level barbarians get persistent rage, meaning the only thing that ends your rage early is you. That's my secret, donkey. I'm always angry. Hey everyone, thanks, thanks for watching my videos. I know that they're dumb. 16th level barbarians will give us our last ability score improvement. Cap off your strength to make sure your fights are ogre as soon as possible. Our capstone is the 17th level of Barbarian for a third brutal critical die and absolutely massive damage on the occasions you need to hit someone. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you're a beefy boy with over 200 HP, resistance to physical damage, and extra HP when you get stinky. You're also able to lay the smack down with rage hits dealing 1d8 plus 1d6 plus 9 damage each and a ton of bonus damage when you critically hit. Finally, you're mobile with extra speed as a Barbarian and even more speed and jump distance from some low-level druid spells that don't require concentration, meaning you can have them up while you're raging. For weaknesses, you're not the sharpest tool in the shed, with a flat intelligence modifier making you susceptible to some nasty saving throws. You're also looking kind of dumb with dumped charisma and your thumb making you bad at negotiating, so you might not get the best prices when you rescue princesses. Finally, even though you can take hits, you're not great at avoiding them, with AC around 16 when you're not wearing armor. Thankfully, you can outlast just about anyone who steps into your swamp. Let your freak flag fly and punch people while gassing up the place. Just watch out for spellcasters and politicians. Non-physical challenges could mess up your happily ever after. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. It's another redemption poll week on the Patreon, so vote for Dr. Doom, Ryu from Street Fighter, Yusuke from Yu Yu Hakusho, or Syndrome from The Incredibles. And join the Patreon at the $5 tier for character sheets. Also check out Two Lock and Mango. I play video games there. Bye!